there's probably one single decision you have to make in photography when you start off and it probably is the decision that's gonna impact the rest of your career and if you are gonna switch it, it's gonna take a lot of work and sometimes a lot of pain. And that is exactly what we are here to answer today. And that is what camera do I buy? Okay, look, there are so many videos on YouTube and TikTok and whatever about cameras you can buy, but this is gonna be your all comprehensive video because guess what? I've shot three of the major brands and to be honest, all the other brands kind of don't compete sometimes. Look, there's obviously a ton of other videos you could be watching. I'm so glad you're watching this one and I'm gonna give it to you as quick and as gritty, as dirty as possible so that way you can figure out what sort of camera you want, what my ecosystem you wanna build out of and from there, make your decision on, hey, am I gonna continue doing this or am I gonna switch off to another company? Now, obviously, we have a ton of brands you can pick from. Look at this. There are so many brands that you can pick for a camera. But the top three brands that exist out there, and you know them, is Canon, Sony, and Nikon. Obviously, you have companies like Fuji and Olympus that do some great cameras as well, but we're gonna focus on the three major ones because guess what? Those are most likely the ones that you're gonna pick. Starting off the list in no particular order is Canon. I'm gonna give you three reasons why I like them and three reasons why I don't like them for every single brand, and here it is. Number one, the color science on a Canon camera, I believe, is much more true to tones than any other brand. You will see similarities to Nikon, but when you're looking at skin tones, it is by far the most accurate. I love it being diverse and having more of an orange tone in my skin. I notice that I look and I feel much better whenever I shoot with a Canon versus any other brand. Number two, super user-friendly. The menu is much more simple than the other two. Everything is kind of in its place, so you don't have to worry about jumping around too much on different levels and different menus. It makes it really easy for you as a beginner or for you as intermediate or advanced to navigate through the menu so that we can figure out what to change and how to change it. And it just does it so seamlessly that you really don't have to think about it. Number three, the variety of lenses and also the prices of the lenses can scale from anything from third-party lenses into your Canon L lenses and it can be a range from budget to obviously more art or more specific lenses that are more expensive. But really, whatever you're looking for, Canon will have it. If it doesn't have it, there'll be a mount for it. They'll find the adapter. Canon does a great job of being kind of inclusive when it comes to the variety of lenses that it offers and also third party um, people coming in and innovating some things for them. Three things I dislike about Canon, all right? The number one, and this is by far the top of the list, is the overheating issue. If you shoot a lot of video like I do, especially if you shoot video in 4K, you will find that there is an overheating problem. There's no problem when you are using it in 1080 or if you're just using it here and there, but if you're shooting for 30 minutes straight, you will encounter some sort of issue when dealing with overheating. The second biggest con is the battery life. I kid you not, I probably run through four or five batteries on a shoot day and it burns through it so fast, especially if you're shooting 4K, because that screen will just burn, burn, burn. Now here's the thing, you can put your brightness down, you can do a lot of things. What's gonna happen is then it's gonna limit your functionality and it's just not good. Now, most cameras don't have the best battery life in the three lineup. From my experience, I have noticed that Canon does burn through its battery way faster than Sony and Nikon. Not by much, but it is significant enough that like I notice and Unfortunately, I have to carry on eight batteries with me at all times, so kind of stinks. And three, this could be a pro, this could be a con, however you view it, um, but the sharpness of a Canon or its autofocus system is definitely not as advanced as a Sony. Sony definitely has something a little bit more advanced than them. Canon some lacks a little bit in that department. Just recently, they introduced iFocus, and I mean, a few years ago, but Sony has had that forever. And so they are lacking a little bit behind the autofocus system, but really, it's come a long way, but definitely Sony's gonna give you those sharper photos. Now, that's Canon on more of the mirrorless side. Now, I'm gonna talk about Sony. Obviously, Sony cameras are all mirrorless cameras, and they're a really great variety. Um, I shoot personally with a Canon R6 and a Canon R, but with a Sony, you kind of like the equivalent, which would be like an A7S III or an A7 III, and those are gonna be cameras that are kind of gonna give you that quality that you're looking for, whether it's photo or video. So here are the three things I love and three things I hate about Sony. Number one, I love how Sony is so small. The profile of a Sony camera is tiny. The body is so compact, much easier to pack. Obviously the lenses are gonna vary in size, but in general, the Sony camera is gonna be a much more compact camera to carry. Number two, going back to the con of Canon, the pro is that the photos are razor sharp. You're gonna see 
like every single detail dialed on with a Sony camera. For some reason, Sony just really, really focuses on their autofocus and it is just perfect. Really doesn't need to be calibrated. I've seen, I've realized that I do calibrate my lenses a lot more when I am shooting Canon and when I shoot Sony, it comes perfect right out the box and can just shoot razor tack sharp photos. Number three, and this can be also, once again, a pro or a con, but the videos you get from Sony give you a much more cinematic look. The way they're built out, and obviously if you shoot in uh, log, it's gonna be way different, but the way they're built out makes it feel more cinematic for some reason than a Canon or a Nikon. It could be the colors, it could be um, what they're doing and their science. I'm no, no expert on how a camera is built, but for some reason I see a video and I can immediately tell that it's shot with a Sony just by the way it looks. Now three cons. The first is gonna be your color science. I do not like how skin tones or colors show up on a Sony. For some reason, everything feels sort of a faded film look, which just goes along with that whole cinematic side of things I was talking about. And it's just not my speed and not sort of what I'm looking for. Obviously to each their own, that can be a pro for you, it can be a con, but for me, it just doesn't make, it doesn't make skin tones look that good. Number two, this is the whole opposite of Canon's pros, is that the con of a Sony is that the menu is so excruciatingly bad. For some reason, Sony just, I, I don't know, couldn't get it down to a science on how to make their menu and it's just all over the place. It feels like antiquated and just not at all user-friendly. I really hate scrolling through it and it just takes me forever and I just get agitated on so many settings and buttons I need to push. So not a huge fan of that. Lastly, Kama Sony, the price of your lens or the glass, right, is so expensive. For those higher end lenses, you're gonna be paying a lot of money for repairs, for purchases, whatever it is, anything Sony branded is gonna be just for some reason more expensive than anything else in the market. And the availability for third party lenses is just not there. So that's probably one of the biggest cons, especially if you're gonna be more budget conscientious than kind of really lean away towards that just because you are gonna be spending quite a bit more. And lastly, Nikon um, is sort of like Canon and Sony just like try to mesh together and they try to just pick the best parts of everything and at the end of the day they just couldn't come up with a good camera so I stay away from Nikon it's just not my favorite I think either Canon or Sony just does it better and Nikon is just kind of just out of there so three pros it's a camera it takes photos and uh, it fits in your hand and three cons it's an icon it's an icon it's an icon so just don't buy Nikons all right that's enough so if you're just starting out I'm gonna give you your cameras that you should buy so if you're just starting out this is gonna be a short list of cameras that you should buy the first one is coming out of the lowest price point the Canon an RP. The Canon RP is a great entry level Canon camera. It has amazing photos. It'll take good video. It'll get the job done, especially if you're just starting out or a hobby photographer. Great way to dip your feet in the pool. It is coming up at a little over $1,000 after taxes and you are gonna have to invest on a nice lens. No matter what camera you buy in this lineup, I do recommend buying a 24 to 70 or the equivalent to that whatever lineup it is. That's gonna give you a variety of angles and that really is gonna cover all the bases you need for those close-up shots, those further shots, things that you want more depth or less depth and that's exactly the lens I'm using right now and it's been perfect. It stays on my camera about 80% of the time. So I highly recommend getting a 24 to 70 in whatever capacity or mount that would be. The next jump up from the Canon RP would be the Canon R6. The R6 is an amazing camera. That is my workhorse. It's what I'm shooting right now. It is a little bit pricier. It is way better than the R. I love my R as a backup camera. It's been amazing to me, but the R6 just gives me way better video focus, way better video quality, as well as higher frame rates that I can shoot with. And then it takes photos like a dream. So I love my R6 is what all my work has been done with. Everything you see that I've shot the last couple of years has been with my R6. And then right above the R6, you're gonna have the R5 and R5C. The R5 and R5C are gonna be your cinematic and your higher end versions of this. There are needs for that. If you're a studio photographer that needs to shoot things for billboards and a lot of megapixels, these are gonna be cameras that are gonna give you those megapixels that you need, as well as the cinematic quality that you're looking for in certain requirements for whatever videos you're shooting. To be honest, I don't think there's much need in that space unless you're a very niche brand or production company that needs that sort of higher quality for whatever it is you're shooting but to be honest the r6 is great middle of the ground camera to have and it just gets the job done when it comes to sony for your really really beginner lines you have your sony a series that's going to be anything from your 6500s which is a classic workhorse to a 6600 and those are going to be some great lenses keep in mind that they're not full frame though so you are giving up some sort of quality from them but overall, there's some amazing cameras at a lower budget. Now, one of the hardest things about Sony's is the articulating screen. Please keep in mind, some of them don't have a fully articulating screen. Some of them just pop out a little. They don't allow you to have it kind of flipped how I have it right now that I can see myself and do this video. So if you're focusing on YouTube or blogs, whatever you're thinking of, then it may be a little bit struggle kind of dig deep into see if the screen articulates or not, because that might be a deal breaker for you. After that, you're gonna jump up to the A7 series. I've seen a lot of people still shoot with A7 IIs. Great camera. You can probably find some used ones at a good budget, but 
the a7 III is gonna be your main workhorse. That camera is amazing. It comes a little bit lower than the Canon R6 and it's gonna give you everything you need from a Sony camera. Obviously pair it with that glass and it's gonna look absolutely crisp and beautiful. If you wanna take a step above the a7 S3, it's gonna be really for your video users as well. It's gonna have amazing autofocus. It's gonna give you that quality that you need no matter what you're shooting. And so those are gonna kind of be the two that are competing there. There are some more cameras above that or some more Sony options you can have. But to be honest, that should be enough. Anything more than that's kind of overkill. Unless once again, you're in that niche production space where you need a bigger and better production camera. And then obviously you can just keep going up from there. Either way guys, I hope that helped. It's not too much crazy information. I kind of want to condense it all into a smaller video. So that way you can kind of make your decision right here and then. My number one pick once again is the Canon R6. After that, it's followed with the Sony a7 III. Those two cameras are going to be amazing. But whatever you do, make sure you purchase a good quality lens. I cannot stress that enough. Do not buy these cameras with the kit lens. If there's a way for you to buy the camera with just the body and save that money, buy it with just the body and then go ahead and spend more money on that 24 to 70 millimeter lens that's gonna be your workhorse and it's gonna be your best absolute friend. Either way guys, till the next one, see ya. Thank you.